Acetals and hemiacetals are molecules that are formed in the reaction between an aldehyde or a ketone and one or two alcohol molecules. In this overview of the reaction, I'm showing the reaction being done with a small ketone, but this reaction works equally well with any aldehyde or any ketone. Um, also in this reaction, notice that we have H plus written underneath the arrow. It's written underneath the arrow to indicate that the H plus is a catalyst. Sometimes instead of writing H plus, people will write H2SO4, which is the formula of the actual acid that's used to catalyze this reaction. And sometimes people are really, really tricky and they just write the phrase low pH. Low pH is acidic pH, so this phrase is just another way of saying that it's being done in the presence of an acid. If you react your aldehyde or your ketone with one alcohol molecule, this is the product that you will make. This particular molecule is called a hemiacetal. Hemi being the prefix that means like half, so this is a half of an acetal. The hemiacetal's characteristic is this particular series of atoms. So it is an R group. This R group is just some sort of carbon chain followed by an oxygen, followed by a carbon atom, followed by an oxygen, followed by a hydrogen. Sometimes it's kind of tricky to pick this acetal or hemiacetal group out of a molecule. Let's take a look at like how this molecule is actually being formed because I've used some colors here to help you visualize it. The original ketone in this molecule is... Uh, represented in orange over here in the hemiacetal. So this is the three carbon atoms and the oxygen of the ketone. You can see that the carbon-oxygen double bond has been converted to a single bond. The alcohol is split into two pieces. The OR is attached to the carbon um, of the carbon-oxygen double bond, and the hydrogen ends up on the hydrogen of the oxygen, excuse me, the hydrogen ends up on the oxygen of the carbon-oxygen double bond. In this notation, I'm using R to indicate like whatever might be attached to this alcohol. Maybe it's a CH3OH, in which case this would be a CH3 out here. The hemiacetal can react with a second alcohol molecule. The two alcohol molecules could be identical to each other or they could be totally different. It just really depends on what you want as a chemist. If it reacts with a second alcohol molecule, this is the product of that reaction. This is called an acetal, so this is like a full-blown acetal. Looking at the colors again, the purple OR group from the very first alcohol, they stay there, they haven't gone anywhere. The second alcohol is also split up, just like the first one was, and the second alcohol's OR group is attached right there. This also produces a water molecule. The water molecule is only produced during the second as, uh, alcohol reaction. So if you're only making a hemiacetal, you're not going to be making water at the same time. The acetal functional group is distinguished by this R-O-C-O-C -O -C group. Again, sometimes kind of tricky to pick out. Let's take a look at two examples of forming hemiacetals and acetals. Now in this reaction, you do have to pay attention to the stoichiometry, meaning exactly how many alcohols are you adding to this aldehyde or ketone. In our first example, we're only adding one alcohol, which means that we're only doing this much of the reaction right here. We're just forming the hemiacetal. What I like to do is take my original aldehyde or ketone and redraw it. Just let's just start with it completely redrawn, not make any changes to it at all. And then what I like to do is take that carbon oxygen double bond and turn it into a single bond, just like that. And then I'm going to add the alcohol molecule. Um, and I'm going to do that with a different color here. Part of the alcohol molecule is going to be added to the carbon, and part of the alcohol molecule is going to be added to the oxygen of the carbon-oxygen double bond. I just have to pay attention to what goes where. The alcohol molecule gets divided or broken in half at the OH bond, so I'm going to think about it like that. I'm going to put this much of the molecule in one of these two places, and I'm going to put the hydrogen in the other spot. I just have to pay attention to what goes where, because it's important. Looking at the structure of the hemiacetal, I can see that I need to make an OH group, so that tells me that this hydrogen needs to go on the oxygen, and that means that this part of the molecule goes into the other spot. It does make a difference the way that you write it. So for example, if you just write CH3O, that's actually wrong because it's the oxygen of the CH3O group. The oxygen atom is what actually connects to this carbon, so you've gotta make sure you write it in this order. This is the hemiacetal product of 
the reaction. So this one is done. Let's take a look at our next example. In this one, we can see that we have two alcohol molecules. We have two alcohol molecules, which means we're doing the whole entire reaction. When you're doing the whole entire reaction, you don't have to draw the hemiacetal. You can just go straight to the very ending and just draw the acetal at the very end. So let's do that. Again, I want to start with the same strategy. My strategy is to draw the original ketone in this case, like just completely unchanged. There it is. And then I know that this reaction is going to take my carbon oxygen double bond and it's going to turn it into a carbon oxygen single bond. And I'm going to be adding a bond to the carbon and I'm going to be adding a bond to the oxygen. Now what's going to go where? So looking at my uh, alcohol molecule. I know that my alcohol molecule is being split at the OH. When I'm making an acetal, I'm not making an OH anywhere. I'm making two OR groups, two OR groups. So I'm going to take the first OR group from alcohol number one, and I'm going to add that right there, just into that spot. Now for the second OR group, I've got to be a little bit careful. Like I've got to be a little bit careful about what it looks like. My second OR group needs to be this right here, and I've already got the oxygen present. I don't want to add a second oxygen. I just want to finish this group off. So that means I just need to add one more bond like that. And don't forget that this reaction also produces a molecule of water.